Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the seven most crazy recent spikes and there has been a lot of price movement. I cannot remember this many huge spikes all in, in one, essentially one week since RTR. This is a pretty crazy batch of spikes. Let's begin with Rexin Unlife. Obviously it is a unique card. Whenever a card reads you don't lose the game for having zero life or less, it's very good. It has a modern combination with the new card from Hour of Devastation that does not allow you to get counters. So therefore you cannot get infect counters. It's always had a very good combo with Malera as well. So it fits right in that deck. Uh, if they do not have enchantment removal, given the fact that the combo is both two pieces enchantment, you probably win the game. Now, Malera's weakness is that they typically will have lightning bolts, fatal pushes. They can get rid of Malera relatively easy, but unless they have enchantment removal, you can kind of catch them off guard. Now, another one, yes, you can see this is a card that for the life of it has been bulk, but but anytime you can uh, draw cards, it's very good. I've always wondered why this card did not go up in price. It is now a $5 card and a $14.50 foil. I think the foil was like bulk as well, like really bulk. It's old, it's from Ravnica. Uh, that is a very long time ago. Four in a red, whenever you play a spell, put the cards in your hand onto the bottom of your library in any order, then draw that many cards. That is the key. You get to draw that many cards. Drawing cards is very, very good, and it will trigger other abilities that will probably allow you to draw more cards. It's interesting. It's something that is fun. It's very chaotic. Um, it's, I kind of never, I don't, I'm wondering why I didn't buy any of these because I did not. I'll be, I've looked at it, but given the price graph, I never expected it to actually spike. Now, Angel of Invention from Calades. This is a very beautiful angel, and it has it was under two dollars, and now has jumped back to five. The foil, I believe, has not caught up yet. This is like the best card in that one game we used to play called Magic Duels before they got rid of it and didn't replace it with anything. Oh, caveat. Why would they get rid of Magic Duels and then say, oh, we're getting rid of it, and there's not like a replacement, and the whole plan is to get new players? Does that make sense to anyone? Like if Magic Duels is supposed to be for the new players, and then you said, oh, we're not going to uh, give you our devastation, goodbye, and nothing replaced it. They just said Magic Digital next. That, that's not a solution, nor is it a replacement. So it's very frustrating. This was one of the better cards on that platform. I like it. The tokens are extremely relevant. Uh, the plus one, plus one ability. It's just a lot of value for what it is. Even in, I would imagine, EDH, it would have a lot of playability in it as a very strong angel. Just good value. A lot of you said, this card is not worth $5. You would be right. It is worth $10 now. <laughs> now, is it actually worth $10? Probably not. As has been pointed out, I'm pretty sure this is a common. I'm almost certain that this is a common. Misha's Bobble was the uncommon. So maybe this is an uncommon. But regardless, there are thousands of tens of thousands of maybe hundreds of thousands of this card out there. But the question is, where are they? Ice Age and 5th Edition were not considered very valuable sets. I could imagine a scenario where a lot of people threw away these cards. And it is now kind of scarce. Like this should have been so obvious, right? That the only ob not obvious point was Legacy would be supported. That kind of came out the blue, but as soon as Legacy became supported, you would be like, wait a second, Mises Bobble was how much money? It's like $20, $30, and this does the same thing, and Legacy? 
Oh, come on, right? All right, the snake basket, as I wanted to put it here as a correction, these are really seven of my favorite spikes because they just are so ridiculous. And my, I'm going to end with a Homeland card. As you guys know, I love my Homeland. Snake Basket, uh, it reads Cobra, but that has been changed to Snake. <laughs> that explains why this card is going up in price. Snakes are definitely in. As we've seen in previous videos, snakes have... Uh, a lot of snake cards have gone up in price, and I don't see them going down in price anytime soon. So Snake Basket, a way to generate X amount of snakes, and then the snakes will either trigger, or they'll get plus one, plus one, or they'll draw you cards, or they'll get infect. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with snakes, and Snake Basket is a lot of fun. Um, it is a card that people just enjoy winning with, because why not? I mean... If you are a snake deck, actually we do have a card after the Homelands card, which I'll go into detail about. But now we're going into my favorite set of all time, Homelands. This card, I believe, is on the reserve list. It went from bulk, like really bulk, to $3 overnight. Is it good? Let me read it to you. Two double red. From Minotaur, not even legendary. All Minotaurs get plus one, plus zero. It itself is a one free. So it is a two free for four that gives Minotaurs plus one, plus zero. No, this is not a good card. This is actually Norway, which is better because it costs the same, but it's protection from blue or protection from red. Man, this card is bad. But it is on the reserve list. I'm pretty sure of it. I'm almost certain because it seems to be a rare. And a lot of the rares, if not memory serves me correct, maybe all of them are on the reserve list. They just kind of uh, indiscriminately picked cards, right? They weren't like, oh, Gaia's Cradle. Yeah, that's a backbreaking card and we know it. Let's put that on the reserve list. No, they just kind of put you know, entire sets. I had said this was a great speculation because I had said that this card is just very difficult and is mill. I mean, it's very difficult to pull the card. It's from a set that I don't think is that great. It's You have to pull it as a flip mythic. A flip mythic. It's very interesting and not easy to do. Um, and it comes from a set that has no value. Remember, Algic Moon has Lily. Lily, the most expensive card in standard even now. Lily see, that sees, sees, play, and death shadow in modern. So I'm not too concerned about, like, if you were holding, like, one card and they were Liliana of the Last Hope, yeah, you probably will need to play with them. Uh, they're not bad. But uh, that being said, Starter Awake is a great, I don't know, I think a bolt left on this one, but you never know. Mill cards are just extremely popular and very liquid at this stage. And that's why I like. I like cards that are liquid because uh, even if card, if you have a bunch of cards that cannot move, they're pretty much useless in my opinion. I would much rather have cheaper cards that can move and Starter Awake used to be one of those cards. Anyway, those are my top seven. A uh, very diverse array of uh, spikes and probably some of my favorite ones. Uh, you got one from Homelands, you got Snakes, you have Angels, what else do you have? Infect cards or Malera based cards. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.